Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly at Pill TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert's Chicago federal trial and his appeal status on the federal Brooklyn conviction. Um, the appeal process is going forward. They're still reviewing it. Um, I hope that everyone is breathing and remaining calm. You know, this is a trying time for all those who support Robert. So it is with a uh, great honor that I am here with you today to share some information that I feel is vital for the R. Kelly Appeal TV. First of all, I again hope that everyone is breathing and remaining calm. And if we, because if we remain calm, and not give in during a passive desire. See, right now, put ourselves in the forefront, watching Robert. We're not gonna put ourselves in his shoes because nobody deserves to be there. But put yourself in the seat in front of Robert watching him. You're going to find that we're watching him go through many passive desires. He's desiring to be out of that seat. That is a hot seat that many cannot even think about being in, okay? But he's there. And so we've learned that he's increasing what is known as in universalism, it's called individual magnetic force. He is creating the surrounding surrounding him to protect him. It's like a fence protecting him based upon his consciousness, his belief, his knowing. And many of us could never sit in that seat without being jumpy, without being argumentative. He's not engaging anything in this trial or the trial before. So for the past three years, let's critique the character of Robert Sylvester Kelly in the courtroom. For the last three years, he has been patiently listening to what we as supporters can assume to be lies of victims and witnesses who take the stand against him at any other three-year time frame. And with immunity, being granted in and of itself assumes that others who are going before him is already guilty. They've already proven that they're so guilty that they need a pass in order to not be convicted. Does that make sense? So immunity in and of itself assumes guilt. Robert is not you know, choosing to testify. And many in the criminal justice system suggest this to be pleading the fifth or remaining silent or allowing his attorney to do her job for him because he knows that if these testimonies are consistent to what may or may not be jogging his memory, he could say the wrong thing. Um, for me, I see memory as being a constant truth um, projector. It projects exactly what the truth is, you know? Um, memory, even if, we say the wrong thing, the second we say the wrong thing, that memory is going to remind us that this really took place. That really took place. So, so memory never lies to a person who was there. How many agree with that? I had a conversation that was very deep, very, very deep. And the individual did not want to be involved with the R. Kelly situation 
But that was one thing that he and I agreed upon, that memory never lies to a person who was there. So when we are silent, it removes all doubt of what could come out to make someone incriminated based on words that they themselves use to be taken out of context by the person who's looking at that individual. So we're looking at Robert and we're saying, okay, yeah, testify, testify, you know, prove your innocence, you know, let's go and show these people, Robert, that they're lying. But Robert is like, no. And that is the most mature, patient, thing that anyone could do and not all of us are equipped to be in that position and that's why many of us are not already there so these incriminating things that could come out and be taken out of context is not there for anyone to grab on whether it's a supporter to grab on see i knew he was innocent or a hater see I knew he was guilty or a uh, prosecutor. Okay, I wasn't there, but she's saying all of these things are threads that are created within the universe of chaos that must come to surface in some way or form. So if it is believed that by the silencer, if the silencer believes that it is true, all he or she must do is show up such as he is doing right now. So we need not speak everything to the world. And this is the message that I'm getting from Robert in a materialistic world. You know, whether this is someone, one of us that are desiring a new car, a new house, a new job, a family, money, Whatever it is we're desiring, one thing that the believer knows in its silence is what is to be expected. So we need not speak everything to the world because when we do, it loses its ability to be precious. See, if I was sharing with you a personal situation that I want it to occur in my life at this point. All the viewers and listeners of R. Kelly Appeal TV would have that snapshot to determine whether I need it. But it's not whether I need it. It is based upon whether the person feels that they would want it. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want freedom. So then more and more unjust things occur in the case. Oh, I want him to be found innocent because I'm innocent. But if, you know, whatever happens, it must be decent and in order for the universe to project it to save whatever it is that's precious whether it's guilt or innocence, to save whatever is precious. And that's where justice should be coming in on this situation. Now, this conversation is deep and it's not for, it's not for everyone, but um, this conversation is more for those who understand the law of attraction because that's what we're speaking here. And when we talk about the law of attraction, it is what we desire Again, that individual magnetic force that each of each of us have when it comes to our own personal uh, personal frequency. OK, we all give out that emit that um, opportunity. Have you ever been uh, taking a test and you know you didn't study, but you know you heard a lot of it enough to where you can wing it? And then you think you got an F, but in your heart, you want an A. And then the next thing you, you, uh, you're somewhere in the middle. So you end up with a B plus and you're wondering, how did I do that? It was the, the, the magnetic individual force that made that come to fruition. 
So this is a philosophical science and it's an art behind the building of change and creating one's relative truth. This is a philosophical process. Um, philosophy is the study of knowing and the study of knowledge and experience and basing that experience upon that which we know to be true. So again, that is happening in Robert's case. Um, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. But when we have, you know, three individual people coming together, it's very difficult to manifest one's own truth when we combine all three together, because I guarantee there will be some form of contradiction. So we're having that as well that we're dealing with that has to be faced. So in this example of individual magnetic force, by Robert telling everyone he didn't do this or jumping up and, and saying he's a liar, she's a liar, instead of doing all the chaotic things, it would be defeating himself just like it did on the Gail King show. It would be a depleting, a depletion of his energy that's going to allow him to even persevere all of the scandal, the lies, maybe some of the truth, and prepare him less to be ready for to, to face it, you know? Can you let me know if you're understanding what I'm saying here? Because um, this is a new concept for me that I've learned through watching him over the last three years. And I'm finally at that point where I can sum it up and make it connect to my thoughts. Um... This practice of energy storing, that's what I think he's doing. He's storing up his energy for the time that should matter the most, preparing him for the next surprise, the next lie that comes out in the courtroom, the next fact that he recognizes through his memory. Because remember, we did say memory never lies to the person who was there, you know? It never lies. It emanates. We do the very same same thing every single day when many people will be amazed at how the forces of those thoughts emanate circumstances that we befall that actually happens on a regular and consistent basis. Robert is teaching us to be disciplined in our thoughts about him and honor the way that he's doing his trial. He is storing up individual magnetic force for whatever time he feels is the best time to produce it. It's kind of like wishing for that new vehicle or that new house or that new boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, and then just fantasizing about it, seeing it happen, going through the motions, going to look at a vehicle, going to take a tour of a house, doing a virtual house tour online, putting yourself in the walking through the process. Because if everything is an illusionary dream in this world, then everything that we bring to manifest happens first from thought. And I know you've heard that many times. And I know that nine times out of 10, you can actually connect the two together and say, absolutely. So he's not rushing in like most fools would do at this point, telling everybody what they want to hear, trying to make it make sense, trying to, you know, this is not a sensical thing. This is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual warfare. And that's something that we need to understand why it looks so many times on one hand, ha ha, he's wrong. He's guilty. No, that's just the basics. That's just the base area of the platform. The guilt or innocence is the base of it. But what is more intuitive and more spiritual and more maturing 
is the fact of what is truly going on in his mind that only he can comprehend. Bonjean is the closest to take snapshots of that thought, you know, of that emotion, of that opportunity. Even the people who are incarcerated with him right now are the closest that can, you know, connect to everything he's feeling, to everything he's thinking. It's amazing. So by him not engaging, he is now acquiring what is known as a special quality of energy surrounding and putting protection around his aura. And that's what we should do. That's what we do when we get up to go to work. That's what we do when we get in our vehicles. We do it every day, but it's only until we see it happening in this extreme form does it say, hmm, that is a spiritual thing. And how it is spiritual, many people don't connect or get an understanding of. So this is what this video is about today. By him not engaging, he is acquiring a special quality to surround his aura. This ability creates an enhancement to greatly produce an outcome favorable to what the silencer, or in this case, Robert Sylvester Kelly, is trying to desire. What are his desires? We'll soon know. We, we will soon know. So Robert is creating this story as the author and finisher to what will occur within his realm of higher existence. So this is even uh, R. Kelly we never got to know. Um, you know, from love letter to bump and grind, this is a higher existence of Robert that we never was able to witness until today, until now. Between this three-year period of time, he seems not to be worried about what his fans think, what his supporters think, nor his haters have to say in relation to this obstruction, video information, racketeering, man, and any other charge that could come up or that has come up. Defending himself in a way that many have never experienced. This is the new Robert. This is the new Robert Sylvester Kelly. This is the more matured Robert. And in that essence, in that essence of that, that transition, we in the world, his fans are able to see that, are able to administer that with him, are able to uh, manifest and meditate and pray with him. You know? But then you have others who are against him. And this is why the journey has been so long and so hard. So he's defending himself in a way that many have not yet understood that we do on a daily basis. This is a spiritual connection. So in this thought, there were a few responses that came from this conversation that I would like to share. And please refer to the originator of this information as love wisdom. Let's listen to some of the responses that came. You know, this is an energy of teaching and it's great. And the gift that many few of us may never understand is the awareness of knowing that the messenger is blessing us with this information and they feel love wisdom on this topic. This was his topic. And I think that love is very intelligent. He's a very intellectual individual, and I love having my conversations with him. Someone else uh, quoted, it's so funny that you post this. It shows, oh, I like shows like Twilight Zone, and there was an episode that kind of touched on this. Once you put whatever it is out there, then your idea, your truth, your energy, or whatever you speak doesn't belong to you anymore. It now belongs to the world. You have just given others rights to whatever it is you have. It is no longer yours. It is the world's. That's a way to look at it. Um, as we cultivate this energy in whatever capacity we're in, we need to know that we're working from a noble standpoint. And that's true. I'm working on cultivating this ability as I have been trained to respond, react, and share immediately everything I know 
and feel, which has been detrimental in so many situations. I have learned to pause, wait, maybe just say it to myself on a recorder or something, and then note it and come back to it later. That's why journaling is so important. Um, I'm usually glad that I waited before I responded. This affirms that African proverb about not telling your plans before they're created or something like that. But at the same time, it's good to put it out in the universe when it's safe. Either way, there's no need to share everything because everyone is not interested or cannot handle all of the information so can sabotage or try to burst your bubble and look at it on the energetic level is even more affirming. So look at it from the energetic level. Focus on that individual magne magnetic force, that that silence, that that thing that you can visualize, but you can't see happening. Imagine it, imagining it connecting to you. That is enough in and of itself, because some people have the ability to frequency our, our conversations, our thoughts. And they, then the next thing you know, before you even do it, it happened to me this morning. The energy field was so strong and so vibrant. That's why I have to say no more that, oh, that person took my, my idea or that person took my energy. No, I now say that all of my friends are abundant, wealth, you know, wealthy, healthy, and anything that I think they can think, but yet what is mine is mine. It comes back to me 100 fold, not I'm giving my vibration out to someone else in the energy, in the energy field. It comes back to me regardless. Um, yeah. Another comment. I knew it. I've been experiencing some amazing things and I haven't told anybody. Because every time I don't say something else, more amazing things happen. Absolutely. I figure it, if it is not broke, don't fix it. There's one other one that was here. Then, then I'm going to, I'm going to move to the next topic. It was a nice one too. Um, oh, this one, this is the opposition to what the thought is. So for those who may not believe what we're saying here, because it has not resonated in your world, we understand. And this is what this gentleman says. L says, 1,000 pardons if it, if, if it feels like I'm antagonistic or provocative. On many of your posts, I think to myself, I feel where you're coming from. But nah, bro, that ain't how the cookie crumbles. What's for me will always be for me. What's not for me needs to hurry up and remove itself from my energetic sphere. Inshallah ta'ala. Mosquitoes congregate around light at night, not fire. Artificial light. My celestial and terrestrial dominion and the programs therein are public information for the future generations to bear witness to. I love telling everything because it frees me from burdens of the collective shadow self. That's why I will never do unspoken agreements and non-contractual obligations. There's two forms of shadow work, individual and collective. Seeing that no man lives unto himself because everything is bound by cords to every other living thing. I'm primarily focused on collective shadow work within this journey of personal self-development, being honest, transparent, socially vulnerable, morally reformable, spiritually secure in the one true creator of the universe, et cetera, et cetera. I feel this book, I feel that this one is highly misleading. Personal magnetism is a situational phenomena that varies throughout various variables. Everything of sustenance has a basis. The basis for the variance, that is personal magnetism, according to this post, is kinetic energy, which, yeah. Thought is the cause of it all. All the kinetic energy we need to become whatever we desire, 
desire can be found in the sweet breath of the God thought, which is our immortal soul. Every breath is a miracle. Reasoning for being antagonistic, nobody should doubt themselves thinking about what could have been when it's as clear as day that we are all unique, peculiar re reflections of the eternal sovereign creator of the heavens and the universe. Thank you. Thank you so much, L. That was beautiful. And um, each one of us are right. Do you see how one side respected the other side? And then from that, we were able to expand knowledge and, and increase our understanding. So the intellectual focus is, like he said, all about how, um, how we're believing in this thing. What motivates us? What keeps us where we are in, in, in our desires and in our beliefs? And through it all, if we expand it out, some people say expand it out and it, it, it'll return unto you. Some people say keep it silent. And before you know it, all will be as it is. So now we go into what I want to talk about outside of the spiritual realm of what Robert is going through in the courtroom. And it is some information about how the courthouse news at courthouse news feels about what was being stated um, on the videotapes and that they're the videotapes are not as strong as we think they are in the area, in the eyes of the court. They started debunking the child porn lie. They got a witness to confirm grown women were on the tape. Some of these tapes included R and his ex-wife, Drea, no minors. Then they got the lady who organized Black Women's Expo to confirm that R was not at the event in 1999, proving Tracy lied. R was at the event in 2000. He met Tracy in 2000 when he was when she was of legal age. Tracy lied about being a minor. Tracy told the Homeland Security agent she did not recognize Rashonda which proves she lied when she said she had a threesome with Rashonda. Homeland Security also casted doubt on Lisa and Sima, Shima, also known as Pauline. Wow. This is a great day for the defense. A lot of lies were debunked. I meant they showed Rashonda a picture of Tracy and Rashonda didn't recognize her. So that's something that I want to get your point of view about because, again, I did have a conversation with someone and I have to bring this out because I want to be, I want to just have everything on this R. Kelly Appeal TV. I don't want to miss anything. And sometimes we have to look at the positive and the not so positive in order to make informed decisions. So if the tape had Drea on it, no one ever mentioned a tape with his wife on it. Um, no one ever commented that, you know, this was something that was needed to be found. Um, so is this something that may be just a hope? for supporters. I'm just saying, because I want to make sure that I have this documented, that is this something that we just hope for? Um, Drea being on the tape, I've never heard of anything of that. But then I can also see Lisa stealing it. I can see Lisa stealing it and blaming the fact that, listen, <laughs> I got some ammunition here. I will post this and I'll say that it was a kid and nobody's going to believe it because we never got to see the tape that they saw in the jury. So I can see that happening. I can see Lisa holding, stealing some personal items from him and that tape being that one with Drea. But I just want to put it out there that on both sides, why I feel that I side more with Lisa stealing the video with uh, Drea on it versus anyone else. 
And it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't because it has never been spoken out from what I hear in the tabloids or anything like that on, on regular social media news. But it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. So that's just a thought that I want to get your opinion on and I want you to, you know, meditate with. Now, Dave Burns says at J DJ B Y R N E S one that he tweeted winner said the six or seven tapes consisted of R Kelly having sex with different women on each tape. Defense directly asked winners if the women on the tapes appeared under age, but prosecution objects and calls for a sidebar. Mm, that wasn't fair. Why would they do something like that? Call the sidebar on something that they said that they had proof of. Because if you're going to call a sidebar on that, then they're not able to ex express to you if it was what you're saying and misleading people to believe or if it's if they're misleading. So I would have not wanted a sidebar there only because of the fact that they defense directly asked the question, did they appear to be underage? You know, and the appear to be would cause the, the prosecution to say, I object because of the fact that they're not experts in age looking. Well, if they're if the defense is not a uh, experts in age looking, how can the prosecution say one hundred percent that this person is underage? So I get it, Dave. I get it. Defense rephrased the question: Did any of the women appear to you to be underage? Winner says no. Okay. All right. Winners also says he recalls Daryl McDavid coming into. Jensen's office in 2007 to deliver a tape. McDavid wasn't present when Winters played the tape for Jensen, but that the tape consisted of R. Kelly having sex with two women, one of whom was his wife. So now we see why the Drea Kelly uh, case having sex with the minors come into the play. Um, that was just, you know, released about two weeks ago, I think, or a week. And so now I can see just adding it up in my mind. With that, defense wraps up. The questioning of Winters and prosecution is up for cross-examination. Prosecutor Jason Gillian asked if Winters was ever asked by Jensen to give his opinion about the age of um, the women. With that, Arnold is off the stand. Okay, next witness for the defense is Ronald Winters, a private investigator and former personal assistant to R. Kelly, a former now deceased defense attorney at Jensen. Winter says he began working with Jensen in 1998. I'm sorry, this is messed up, but the tweets came wrong. I did them in reverse. So this is the first one. Um, Winter says he was working for Jensen in spring of seven when Jensen was representing R. Kelly. He says he met Kelly as well as McDavid during his time. Winner said he had he was aware of six or seven times when videotapes were brought to Jensen's office. Winner said that these tapes consisted of, you know, R. Kelly having sex with different women on each tape. So now that that's it. So I I want to say that for me personally, I am excited to hear how and see how this is going to flow, how this is going to work out. Um, there really seems to be no case at all whatsoever, but you know how the system can create things that are not relevant to be relevant. And then of course it needs an appeal to rebut it. But um, yeah, so what are your thoughts on the whole concept of Robert Sylvester Kelly and what he's going through in this court trial right now. I know that's redundant. I know everyone's asking everyone about, you know, what their feelings are or hearing so much about it. But do you have a personal feeling about what is taking place with him, either spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, or or just emotionally? 
I mean, what are your thoughts? I'm going to leave 10 minutes in the chat for you to drop some information that could be relevant to what we see that we haven't thought about yet in this trial, because there is a lot that this man is going through. He's going through so much. And yeah, so let me see if there is anything on the docket for the Chicago or Federal Brooklyn Appeal for Robert Sylvester Kelly. Let's see if there's anything here. Okay, I don't see anything. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are putting in some good thoughts here for him. And I'm going to see if there's anything else important here to discuss. Because I only work with the movement of motion. Um, not everything that is. Let me see. A scheduling order. Okay. Hold on. Let me get my battery. I knew this was going to happen. Um, there is a scheduling order. Okay. Let me see. August the 9th. Okay. Response in motion. Let me see. Response in motions, Ray, 323 motion for writ letter, respectfully requesting that the court issue an order for the turnover of the funds in the defendant's inmate trust account for application to the defendant's outstanding criminal monetary penalties. And this was entered 8-9-2022. And then, um, so I know you guys don't want to really have to hear anything about that. There, I, There's nothing to really report on that, but there is a scheduling order. The court has received the government's 323 motion and the defendant's 325 letter in opposition. The government is directed to file a reply by August the 15th, 2022, ordered by Judge Ann Donnelly. Um, so I guess that is either cleared up because it is September 4th. So that is either cleared up or it's still in its motion, um, they may be having to figure out the um, Second Circuit's information before they do that. So anyway, I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And I really appreciate you all for being here, giving the vital information that we feel is important. A portion of this um podcast was created from another um, online portal. So I'm just copying and pasting and putting conversations together reflective to what we had going on in another in another group. However, I think it's very vital and beneficial for our Kelly Nation to have this information as well. So certain things when it just makes sense to connect it to Robert's situation, it becomes something for me to include. So yes, thank you um, for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And as always, we ask you to keep it 100. And as always, be in peace, and we will see you next time.